Hi, my name is David Hammond and I graduated from Dundalk Institute of Technology in 2017 with a BA in Media Communications. And I'm not going to lie, I miss it every single day. DKIT was actually my first choice on my CAO form because my dad went here as a mature student a few years before I did to receive his Master's in Business and he always talked so highly about it, the staff, the campus, everything. And he's from Cork. Do you know how difficult it is for a Cork man to say they love a college that's not in Cork? It's very difficult. If that wasn't enough proof that I'm from a DKIT kind of family, my mom is currently doing her PhD about two doors down from where I am right now, and she absolutely loves it. Uh, and she's a dub. Same thing. Do you know how difficult it is for a dub to say they love a college outside of Dublin? I had the happiest years of my life here, I swear. I know that sounds sad, but it's true. My old lecturers will tell you there wasn't a moment I wasn't having to crack with friends or, or going out or just loving being part of some group project. I wanted to study media because I've always been interested in it and at the end of the day I wanted to be a radio presenter so when I came across the level 7 media communications course I thought well that's just made for me. I came here in the September of 2014 I think and on the first day I met a guy called Mark and he's now one of my best mates. He's living over in America but our whole group of friends see each other every couple of weeks and we talk every single day on WhatsApp. Um, I made some amazing friends and we all just had the best college experience. And throughout my time in DKIT, I worked with LMFM, which is the local radio station for Allow the Mead. And in my second year here, I landed the nighttime show there. So I was going to college during the day from nine to five and then coming home, having a bit of food and heading into work for eight o'clock until midnight, which I know sounds like a lot every single day, but I loved both college and I loved the show. So it wasn't really a chore. And then after graduating, I moved to Waterford and joined Beat 102 103 to be the nighttime presenter there. But after I compiled uh, an entry of my best bits and won radio DJ at the IMRO Awards, which is like the Oscars of Irish radio, they gave me a promotion. So now I present Beats Big Lunch, and I also do some cover presenting on Spin 103, Spin 1038 on the weekends. Um, so if you're ever you know, in the southeast or driving around Dublin, make sure to listen in. But I'm not the only person who can call DKIT their alma mater, and certainly not the only one who went into radio after graduating. I'm very excited to talk to him. Bernard O'Shea, hello. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I really like your hat. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like it too. Well, the reason why I have the hat on is that I haven't had a haircut in seven months. <laughs> um, come here. When did you graduate in DKIT? I graduated in 1841 <laughs> and uh, I did... Uh, that was the first year of the BA in Multimedia Studies. Right. No, I graduated in 2001. Uh, so uh, I graduated in Cultural Studies, as it was called. So you did a three-year course in Applied Cultural Studies, and then you did a BA in, I think it's Cultural, um, oh God, that'll kill me now, Heritage, Cultural Heritage Management, or uh, Humanities, basically, a BA in Humanities. Right. And, uh, the, the course was amazing. We did theatre, archaeology and film for the for kind of three years and all the um, marketing subjects as well. And then in, in your last year, you concentrated on one basic uh, uh, topic and I did archaeology. I did my ver very first ever stand up comedy gig in that theatre where you are now. And uh, no, so I've done, done a lot of plays in that place. Um, uh, stole a lot of props, <laughs> particularly a sweet after and cigarettes. <laughs> from a, a Tom Murphy play called On the Inside. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and remember I did The Crucible in, the, in that, uh, which was, um, which, which was a, an amazing place to put on a play like that because it's such an intense play. Uh, but yeah, and have had really good memories, particularly of the Black Box. And you said you did your first comedy gig right here. How did the first comedy gig go? Yeah, it was really good. Um, <clears throat> it's not, <laughs> uh, but there was uh, amazing people there at the time. There was a lecturer called Margaret Carroll who uh, lectured in English effectively and she was at it and she loved it. And um, there was also somebody's name who I can't remember now. And, and I think he was an economics lecturer. And of course you had Mark and Fiona uh, from the uh, theater side. And, but I loved Dundalk as well. Cause like, you know, I used to play music in McManus's pub um, I used to kind of split my time between um, drinking pints of McCardles and, and trying to sing with, uh, and local singer-songwriters here like Jimmy Johnson and stuff like that. And I loved it up there, you know, and um, uh, yeah. And it's a great town to get your hair cut in, buy a pair of shoes and have a few pints, you know. <laughs> what more do you need? Uh, uh, but no, I loved Dundalk. I loved the people, the crack, um, lived all around it. Um, and, uh, you, you know, it was just 
just it was just like college years should be like the best years of your life. Is there anything better than the Dundalk accent? Hey, uh, it's a very specific accent, the Dundalk town accent, and it's a. Uh, but like you know, it's a very old town, you know, and I think it, it reminds me very much of a. <clears throat> like it, it, it's it's an industrial town, but it has loads of the vestiges of, of of things like like the Spirit Store, which was an originally a early house for the key that now is like a music venue and pubs and and, and it's full of like little kind of things like that and collectively all together it's an amazing town i don't think people know enough about it to realize how how culturally vibrant it is and and also you know you're not that far from carlingford so if you want to bump into a few hen nights on a saturday night you know you could head out there you know or stag nights or whatever it's a really but, great um, town and yeah no and absolutely you know loved it it's one of the big positives of going to an IT and it is that and when I say IT or like a larger town as opposed to a city. If you go to a city and I live very close to UL here and it's a beautiful college or like if you, you know, because the numbers are vast and you'll have, you'll obviously have a great time with your friends, but you, you might not necessarily experience it all together with everybody. Whereas in Dundalk during Rag Week, if you go out during Rag Week, you're going out with the, the vast majority of the college. I know Dundalk is a much bigger college now since when I was there, but but the town feels the college an awful lot more, you know? Like, um, when you know, and you feel the town an awful lot more simply because of the size and the interaction with it. And that's what makes a huge amount of college um, much more rewarding, you know? And like, uh, Again, I sound like a 42 year old man. That's what makes it much more rewarding. But it, like looking back now, it did. The fact that I made friends from Dundalk, knew the town, you know, knew little streets and kind of little weird things about it. Like it makes an awful lot different as opposed to, you know, cities are just bigger, you know, and you will stay in your zone. Whereas in Dundalk, for the talk, you know, I didn't do that. Still seize your own time. You know, yeah. it'll always be there for you, you know, and, you know, and make it your own and, you know, and, and go into the town and, you know, you know, go up to Fahert and go, go into Sleep Gully in and, you know, like, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to go a million miles away to have a fabulous experience. Fair enough, Shay. I could genuinely talk to you all day. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really, really appreciate it.